How's it going, everyone? I hope you're all doing well. And as some of you may know, a few years ago, I switched to Apple Music. I've been a long time user of Spotify. In fact, I remember my dad using it on like Windows XP. And from then on, at least after Groove Shark got shut down, I was using Spotify. However, back in 2019, I switched to Apple Music. There were a few exclusives that I liked on there, along with a few features I thought were cool, but I am now considering switching back. So, let's talk about that. First of all, why did I initially switch to Apple Music? Well, the first thing that I really liked about Apple Music was the library syncing feature. As a Mac user and as someone who has been using iTunes since like 2008, I knew this system. So, if Apple Music was anything like that, great. And it was. In fact, one of my favorite things is that the local music that I had on my Mac automatically synced with my Apple Music cloud library. So I could essentially listen to albums that weren't on Apple Music without having to download them onto my phone. For me, this was awesome. I am a big fan of a lot of artists that aren't actually on streaming services. At the time, it was very much grief. So the fact that I could just click these into my Apple Music library and then 10 minutes later, I'd be listening on my phone was a really cool feature. And something that to this day, I still think is very cool. It meant I could find an album on Bandcamp, download it, stick it in Apple Music, then go do my food shopping, all while listening to this new album. The next reason is I knew I wanted to switch to iPhone when I initially switched to Apple Music, and I thought this would probably simplify things. At the time, Siri wouldn't really work all that well with Spotify, and I wanted the full iPhone experience. So I thought switching to Apple Music would be a good way of bridging this. Now, of course, as I'm sure you're aware, nowadays Spotify does work with Siri natively, you can specify it as your main music player, which in my opinion is definitely a good move. But yeah, at the time back in 2019, when I was picking up my used iPhone 7, in my mind, this was definitely the right move. Next up, I'm pretty sure at the time the student plan was cheaper. And at the time, I was a student. So saving money on my streaming service, always a positive. Next up, one of the things that initially really caught my attention is that when iOS 13 was released, lyric scrubbing was added. Now, of course, this did come to Spotify later on, but this was while I was still pretty new to Apple Music. And so being able to scrub through music simply by clicking on the lyrics, in my opinion, was a really cool feature. So that was another reason as to why I stuck with Apple Music. And the final reason as to why I initially switched over from Spotify is simply due to the fact that more of the music I wanted to personally listen to was available on Apple Music. Now, I'm sure some of you are aware of an artist called Frank Ocean. At the time, I was listening to a lot of Frank Ocean. Like, seriously, I found, like, old demos and stuff like that, and again, loaded it into Apple Music. Baby, on my bedtime stool. Frank Ocean had an exclusive album on Apple Music titled Endless. I really wanted to listen to this album. And sure, while, as somebody pointed out, I could have just purchased this, that didn't really occur to me at the time. And with all these other things that I'd found out about, switching to Apple Music meant that I could listen to Endless. Okay, so now we've established as to why I personally switched, let's talk about the things that are actually keeping me. So, the first thing is better audio quality. Apple Music does just have better audio quality than Spotify. It has lossless playback over wired headphones instead of the 320 MP3s that we get on Spotify. However, most of the time I am listening on wireless headphones, especially if I do just want to listen to music. As I'm sure some of you are aware, wireless headphones are my preferred method of listening to music. So yeah, while this really isn't a big deal for me, when I do want quality, say I'm critically listening to some mixes or something like that, then Apple Music is definitely going to be the better option especially with a decent pair of wired headphones and a headphone amp. Personally, I've moved away from using big headphone amps. I now use this Audion interface. This thing outputs like crazy, seriously good. Next up, Apple Music does actually pay a better rate for artists. I saw a great tweet the other day about how bad streaming has hit the indie scene. So a while ago, I thought it'd be a good move to try and use the higher paying of the two to put the most money back into artists' pockets. However, we'll get to why that isn't necessarily the biggest thing later on. On. That said though, it is important to mention Apple Music does pay their artists more. I listen to a lot of independent music, so while a lot of big artists can survive in this streaming world, indie music is suffering. So yeah, we'll talk about some ways as to how we can help that. Following on, I like the interface more. Now I know this one is super subjective, however as somebody who has been using iTunes since I was 8, I'm very used to how everything works. I personally think it's cleaner, I know where everything is, and while there are a couple of things that bug me about it, in general, I do prefer the interface to Apple Music. Music. Now, onto the reasons as to why I kind of want to switch back. The first one, 
literally all my friends use Spotify. Now, this might not sound like that big of a deal. However, me and all my friends tend to like the same music, except Zoe, but we're gonna get her soon. Soon she'll know all the words to Twin Size Mattress. So, naturally, we are constantly sharing music with each other. And so having to open up a Spotify link in my web browser because someone sent me something and I wanna listen to it, not exactly ideal. We also do have a group playlist that we all essentially just have music to. So I actually have to find myself periodically checking this in order to keep up with what's been added because I'm not on Spotify. I'm in a much better place now, but when I initially switched to Apple Music, I was really going through it. And so at that point in time, I really didn't talk to my friends that much. So unfortunately, that really wasn't a factor for me at the time. Now though, the social aspect of music is much more important to me. Being able to easily share music with your friends is awesome. And while I'm on Apple Music, that's not ideal. And sure, while I am missing out on iMessage integrations, I don't really use iMessage message that much anyway. I think it's actually mostly a US thing. Like barely anybody I know uses iMessage. Another thing is there are actually more albums on Spotify that I like. I know I said why I initially switched there were albums that I wanted to listen to on Apple Music. However, there are more albums that I like to listen to on Spotify that aren't on Apple Music for one reason or another. Me personally, I am a big fan of a Philly band called Glockamora. <laughs> And I've generally found a lot of this indie punk music that I like is exclusively on Spotify. Again, I don't really know the reason for this, but that is simply the case. Like, Just Married, one of their biggest albums isn't available on Apple Music. If you haven't listened to that album, go listen to it. You will not regret it, unless you don't like that type of music, but it's good. <laughs> Honestly, this is also a case for a lot of the music I like. And to be honest, the only Apple Music exclusive that I found I really like is Endless by Frank Ocean. And sure, while being able to watch music videos is kind of cool, I can also do that on YouTube. So realistically, that isn't a reason for me to stay. So yeah, some pretty good reasons there as to why I might actually want to switch back. So what am I going to do about this? I think I'm going to switch back to Spotify for a month or so, see how I like it. And realistically, if I don't, it's no great loss. I mean, it's a month a month subscription anyway. It's not like I'm committing for like a year and I'll see how I find it. Now, onto that thing about streaming royalties. What I have generally found over the years of streaming is that it is, if you like a project from a smaller artist, better to just buy it. In my opinion, that is the best way to support smaller artists. Realistically, streaming as a whole is killing the indie music industry, which is weird, especially in an age where it's so easy to publish your own music. Things should be getting more accessible, not less accessible. And as somebody who's loved this music since I was a wee hipster 13 year old who found the front bottoms and don't tip the delivery boy, I want to do whatever I personally can to keep this genre thriving. And in my older, wiser opinion, that's not by choosing a different streaming service. If you also feel this way and have the financial means to do so, then maybe try buying an album from an artist that you like. I'll check back with you guys in the comments after a month or so once I've fully settled back into Spotify. Oh my god, I have so much local music to transfer. I am not looking forward to that. Okay, so as we just established, I got a lot of work to do, so I'm gonna wrap this video up here. Hope you guys have enjoyed this one. Let me know, by the way, what's your favorite streaming service? Do you like Spotify? Do you like Apple Music? Do you like something entirely different? Feel free to let me know in the comments. I always enjoy reading those. As I said, I am gonna be checking back in a month or so after my switch to Spotify. As for now though, as always, thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you want to see more content like this, then smash that subscribe button. I'm done for now, and I will see you guys in the next one.